Hallelujah. Thank you so much for worshiping. Thank you so much for praying. Hallelujah. And right now we are going to uh, get into a session of worship. As per usual, Mercy normally prepares for us, you know, um, worship. And uh, please, just be open. Open your, open your heart. Open your heart this evening. You know, we, should, we must never come into the presence of the Lord, you know, we, in a, with a familiar spirit. No. Every session and every time that the Lord gives you to be in his presence is an opportunity for you to receive a blessing. Is an opportunity for you to grow in him. Is an opportunity for you to touch him. And this evening, just open up your heart wherever you are. In the name of Jesus, just you know, this is a session of of, uh, of putting down everything that has exalted itself above the name of Jesus, that we may exalt Him, that we may give Him His rightful place. Therefore, open your heart and receive, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, as we worship Him, as we worship Him. Hallelujah. Let's welcome Mercy right now to lead us in worship. Hallelujah. Good evening, Church. I hope you're all well this evening. Um, and I hope you're ready to worship. I just wanted to read for us um, from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 15. And it reads, For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself, verse 16, bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. This evening, I wanted to remind us that we are children of God, that he is our father, that we have not been given the spirit of fear, but of peace, of love and a sound mind. Even though the times are uncertain, the times are trying, we remain children of God. Our identity in Christ does not change because our situation is changing. It doesn't change because our circumstances have changed. It remains the same for he is God. He will remain God through it all. And that's why we remain confident that we are children of God. So prepare yourselves to worship and sing with power and confidence. I am a child of God. I am no longer a slave to fear. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I am a child of God. Amen. Father, we thank you that we have not been given a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but a spirit of adoption by which we can cry, Abba, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for we are your children. Ch 
child of God, oh, I'm no longer a slave to fear, oh, I am, I am, I am a child of God, the most high God, I'm no longer By the arms of the Father I am surrounded By songs of deliverance We've been liberated From our bondage Grace 
died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, always oh, free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my father's house, there is a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's appreciate mercy for reminding us that we are children of God. You are a child of God. Irrespective of what the devil whispers in your ears, you are a child of God and you need to know that. We need to know that. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I am a child of God. Type in that chat and say, I am a child of God. Yes, you are. You were chosen. You were handpicked. My friend, in, on, on all, on, in all the people on this globe, you were handpicked. Hmm? You have been born into a new family. Hallelujah. We became children of God through faith, through faith by believing in him. By believing in him, we become children of God. Hallelujah. Our believing in Jesus as Lord and Savior constitutes a new birth gives us a new birth. That's what he says in John chapter 1, verse 12 to 13, the Bible says, but to all who did receive him, to all who did, re did what? To, whole, to all who did receive him. Hallelujah. What did he do? He gave them the right to become children. Hmm? He, became, he gave them the right to become children. But to all, to all, who, did all who did receive, receive him. him. Hallelujah. What did he do? Hmm? He gave Who them believed right to in his name, mm -hmm. he gave them he the right, the right to, become to become children of God. But to all, 
who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Hallelujah. Somebody appreciate God for that. Mm. How does the Amplify put it? The Amplified put it, puts it in another way. He said, but as many as did receive and welcome him. <laughs> they did what? They welcomed him. I know that you have welcomed him as a child of God. That's why you are here this evening. As many as welcomed him, he gave them the authority. He gave them the power. He gave them the privilege. He gave them the right to become the children of God. That is to those who believe in, those who adhere to, those who trust in him, those who rely on him, those when he gave the, the power to become his children. Somebody say, I have the power to become the child of God. <laughs> say it like you believe it. Hmm. He says, who owe their birth neither to bloods nor to the wills of the flesh, that of, that, that of physical impulse. No, 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 no. Not the will of man or to the, the natural, uh, of the natural father, but to God. They are born of God. You are born of God, child of God. You are born of God. Awesome, powerful. Just think about that. You are born of God. I am a child of God. Can you imagine? Your father, if he's still alive, your mother, if they are still alive, bless them. If they have gone to be with the Lord, we bless them, we remember them. But they were conduits through whom, you know, you came. We are children of God. And the, more, and, and the moment we receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, he gives us that right. Hallelujah. John calls Jesus the word. He calls him the light. He calls him the light in John chapter 1, verse 4 to 5. John chapter 1, verse 4 to 5. What does he say? He says, in him, who? Jesus was life. And the life, and the life, and the life was the light of men. And the light was the light of men. He says, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not understand it. The darkness did not understand it. It could not overpower it or appropriate it or absorb it. And it was unreceptive to that light. It was unreceptive to that light. The world did not understand the light. They did not receive the light. They did not receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And this is how John puts it in John chapter 12, verse 36. What does he say? He says, while you have the light, <laughs> believe and trust in the light. Have faith in it. Hold it fast. Hold on to it. Rely on to it so that you may become sons of the light. How do we become sons of God? We become sons of God by embracing that light, the light that was Jesus Christ, being filled with the light as followers of God. As followers of God. That is how we become children of God. God is the father of lights. He's the father of lights. So this is how uh, James uh, chapter 1, verse 17 puts it. It says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from where is from above coming down for the to, uh, uh, from the father of lights jesus christ was a gift a very powerful gift that came from above the father of lights he is light but he's the father of lights so once we accept the light then automatically we become sons of the light children of the light hallelujah it says, with whom there's no variation or shadow to change. That is how we accept Jesus Christ and become children of God. Hallelujah. We become sons by believing in the light, which is Jesus Christ, by, 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 by accepting him. The others rejected him. 
but as many as received him and welcomed him and believed him, having faith in him, holding fast and relying on him, they became sons of the light. Hallelujah. Paul writes to the Galatians and says in Galatians chapter 3, uh, verse 36, uh, 26, this is what he says. Galatians, Galatians 3, 26 says, For in Christ, for in Christ Jesus, all son, you are all sons of God through faith. How are we sons of God? Through faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. That is how we attain sonship. That is how we attain, okay, um, when, we, when we talk about sonship, it, it, he's talking about both all of us, you know, it, 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 male and female. That's how we attain sonship. The Amplified puts it this way. I like the He says, for you who are born again have been reborn from where? From above. <laughs> you have been reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, sanctified, and are all children of God. Wow. Set apart for his purpose with the full rights and privileges through faith. Through faith. It is through believing. It is through you have got to believe it that you are a child of God. Through faith in Jesus. Period. Hallelujah. Born again. Born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born again. Hallelujah. Now, since you have already been born into a, an earthly family, you know, fami a family that inherited sin and came into the world sinfully through one man, because Adam, the Bible says, through one man sin came into the world. We have already been born into families Families that inherited sin. We were born in sin. Hallelujah. This is how the psalmist puts it. The psalmist puts it very well. He says, you know, he says, you know, behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. In sin did my mother conceive me. You see? That is the family. A family of we were born in a family that inherit families that inherited sin. Family has inherited sin. But we thank God for Jesus Christ. We thank God for sending his, on his son so that we may become sons of the light. Are you together? To become children of God, we need to be born into another family. The family of God. As was in the beginning, before sin entered the world, we get born again into a new family. Hallelujah. In um, John chapter 3, we're introduced to a, a man, a Pharisee, a ruler, a member of the Sanhedrin among the Jews called Nicodemus, who came to Jesus at night, you know, because he did not want people to see him. You know, there are those who come to Jesus, who want to be with Jesus at night, but during the day they don't want to be identified as Christians. This is one of them. He says, when he comes to Jesus, he says, teacher, rabbi, we know. He says, we know. Listen, he does not say, I know. He says, we know. What does that mean? It means that there were others in the Sanhedrin who, <laughs> who, who knew the truth, but they feared. For the fear of the people, they could not come out. So, Nicodemus comes out at night. He says, rabbi. We know that without any doubt, we know without any doubt, we know without, that you have come from God as a teacher. He says, for no one can do these signs and these wonders that we are seeing and attesting miracles. You know, nobody can do them unless God is with him. Wow. This is this, uh, this, this Pharisee, you know, testifying. Nobody can do this, these things. This is what Jesus answers him. John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus, Jesus answered him and says, truly, truly, I say, to you. Unless one is what? Is born of the what? Born again. Unless one is born again, reborn from above. Hmm? 
spiritually transformed, renewed, sanctified, he cannot, he can never see and experience the kingdom of God. In other words, he cannot be a child of God. He cannot. Nicodemus said to him, you know, you know uh, how can a man be born again when he is old? How can he enter his, uh, his, uh, his, his, uh, his, his mother's womb again? How can he enter his mother's womb again? Jesus Christ was not talking about a physical birth. We do not become children of God by physical birth. We become children of God by a spiritual birth. He says, how can he enter his mother's womb again? Jesus said to him, I assure you, and I said to you, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he can never see the kingdom of God. So that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. The physical is merely physical. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Mm. You are born of the spirit, my friend. Not small spirits, not these spirits that, you know, the spirits that we know from, from, from deep, deep villages, you know, the spirits of people have got their own spirits in their own family. I'm talking about those. I'm talking about this capital spirit, the spirit of God. The spirit of God. You are born of the spirit, my friend. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ begin, continues to tell him and says, do not marvel. Do not be surprised. Do not be, do not, do, do not be surprised when I tell you that you must be born again. Don't be, don't, don't marvel. Don't marvel. It says the wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it is coming from and where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Everyone who is born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. We are born of the Spirit. That is why Jesus Christ came, that you may be born of the Spirit of the living God. He came, the Bible says he came at the right time. He did not just come at any time. He, he, had, he had understanding of times. He knew we, we, when to come. He came at the right time to redeem us from the family of darkness into the family of light. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 4, verse, five, uh, verse 4 to 5. This is what he says. <laughs> but when the fullness of time had come, hmm, God sent forth his son, born of woman, under the law. To do what? To redeem those who were under the law. Why? So that we might receive adoption as sons. Did you hear that? He came to redeem us from those dark families, that family, you know, which, uh, which, which David speaks about, says, I was born in sin. He came to, re to, to redeem us from that kind of family so that we may be adopted as sons in the family of God. Hallelujah. It is no accident, my friend, that you are a child of God. It's not an accident. There are some people here, in your family, you are the only one who is born again. Or in your clan. Do you think that's an accident? No. You were predestined to become a child of God. <laughs> Just think about it. You, you, you ought to be shouting hallelujah. You were predestined. You were handpicked. As we sang, as we heard in that song, he has chosen you. You are chosen. He chose you beforehand. He chose you before you were born. He chose you before you happened here. He chose you. That's why you did not die with all those guys who died in alcohol, those guys who died of AIDS. You, know, you were chosen. How do you think you survived that? How do you think you survived that? You were handpicked. And how do I know that? This, the scripture tells us. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. What does he say? And we know. <laughs> even, if we, 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 even if we close here. And we know. You've got to know. I know. With great confidence. 
The Amplified puts it, we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, he's deeply concerned about He causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose and to his plan. Hmm? According to his purpose and to his plan. It says, for those whom, whom he foreknew, he did what? He foreknew. Don't think he has just lo he loved you when you landed here. No, he foreknew you and loved you beforehand. And because he loved you beforehand, what did he do? He predestined you to be conformed to the image. He predestined you to be conformed. You are predestined. I am predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. And in order that he, uh, that, that, that he the son, Jesus, he the son, Jesus Christ, may be the first, first, first fruits among many brothers. Listen, Jesus Christ is my brother. And yet he is my king. <laughs> awesome. I have been predestined. Being a child of God did not happen yesterday. You were chosen. Somebody say, I am chosen. Let me give you another scripture. E Ephesians, Ephesians chapter, chapter, chapter 1, verse 5. What does he say? say he predestined us. <laughs> Why? For adoption to himself. Hmm. He predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ according, according to the purpose of his will. <laughs> Do you understand that? Do not play around with the sonship that you have, my friend. The status that you have has, you know, was here before you. He predestined you to become his child, so do not play around with that. That is why we owe everything to Jesus Christ. We must love him more. We must serve him more. We must give him more. We must give it because he paved a way for us to become adopted as sons of God. Do you understand that? See, because you cannot be physically born again, that's why we have to be spiritually born. A person may not be biologically, you know, or physically born in a family but he can be legally born into it. That's how adoption comes. People may, you, you know people who, cannot, who are not able to, uh, to give birth biologically to their own you know, children. What do they do? They adopt people and legally they become their children. Legally they become born into that family by adoption. Adoption is a legal transfer from one family or situation to another. So we too have been adopted into God's family. And we ought to be celebrating that. How? By faith through Jesus, through whom God has spiritually adopted us. He removed the condemnation that separated us from him. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus Christ did. He removed that which condemned us to become his children. That condemned, that, that, that which re relegated us to a family of sin. He removed that. Hallelujah. He removed that. And, we, and we're going to find that in Roman, Romans chapter 8. We're going to be in Romans chapter 8 for a while. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. What does he say? He says, There is therefore no condemnation or guilt, no guilt, no guilty verdict, no punishment for those who are in who? In Christ Jesus. Those who have believed in him as personal Lord and Savior. Have you believed in him as Lord and personal Savior? There's no condemnation. Why? He says, for, this, the, the, for the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, the law of our new being has set us free. It has set you free from the law of sin and of death. Did you notice that, those, those words? The law of the spirit of of life. Jesus Christ came with a spirit of life. A spirit of life, a spirit of a new of a new being. That's what he brings. Hallelujah. He removed the condemnation.
And this is how he continues to say it in, in verse 3. In verse 3 he says, For God has done what the law could not do. The law could not do it. The law could not, give, could not bring us into a new family. No, it couldn't. Could not remove the penalty. Because it had been weakened by the flesh. Which is man's nature without the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you are naked. God did it. He sent his only son. Who came in the likeness of sinful man. He did not come as a sinful man. He came in the likeness of a sinful man. And offered up his a sacrifice for sin. And he condemned sin in the flesh. He, what did he do? He subdued it. He overcame it. He destroyed it. Why? So that the righteous re requirement of the law may be fulfilled in us who do not live our lives according to the flesh, who are not guided in worldliness, who are not guided by the sinful nature. The moment we receive him, we ought to be in a place where we are not living by the flesh or the sin, which Jesus Christ destroyed, but now must live in the ways of the Spirit, guided by his power. Guided by his power. Why? Because we have been set free. The law of the Spirit of life, which is in Jesus Christ, has defeated the law of sin and death. And God, through the Son, has condemned that sin. He has condemned that sin which is in the flesh, so that you may no longer walk according to the flesh, as slaves of the flesh, but according to the Spirit. In other words, there was a mindset change by the death of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. To become a child, your mind has got to be changed, has got to be turned around. Hallelujah. He continues. In verse 5 to 8, it says, those who live according to the flesh, if you live according, so they have set their minds on the things of the flesh. Their minds have not changed. And we've got many, many people who profess to be Christians, but their minds are not yet changed. Why? Because they still, uh, you know, live according to the flesh. It says, but those who live according to the spirit, what do they do? They set their minds on the things of the spirit. They set their minds on the things of the spirit. Where is your mind today? Where has been your mind set lately? Paul continues to say, for, but he says, for, for to set the mind on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the spirit, he says, is life and peace. He says, but for the, for the mind that is set on the flesh, he says, is hostile to God. Other versions say that is enmity. You become an enemy. You position yourself to become an enemy of God. Why? Because that kind of mind cannot submit to the law of God. Cannot. And those who are in the flesh, they cannot please the Father. You cannot be in the flesh and be a child of God. You cannot. That's why we must cherish the sonship that God has given us. How? By setting our minds on the Spirit. Hallelujah. That's how we remain in the presence of the Father as children. Remember the, the, the guy called the prodigal son? We, we're not even given his name in the Bible. We don't even have his name. <laughs> you know? He did not cherish his position as a son. He played around that, you know, that status. He was at home in the presence of the Father. What does the Father mean? The word Father means source and sustainer. Any son, any child who plays around with the father, who does not notice, who does not realize that the father is their source and sustainer, they are, they are, they are in jeopardy. They are putting their lives on the line. You must, you must protect your sonship. You must, uh, you must cherish your, your sonship. What did he do? He set his mind on the passions of the flesh. He was not, he was not satisfied at home, yet he had everything. So he went into prayer and asked, I need my stuff, everything, I need my inheritance. Inheritance comes when your father dies. 
What was he doing? In other words, he was saying, you do, my father, you do not exist. For me, you do not exist. So he killed him even when he was still alive. Because if he's asking for his inheritance, when the father is still alive, he's like he's killing him. He says, I want what belongs to me now. What? Yeah, now. And the father did not reject his prayer request. He gave him whatever he had. He said, yeah, go. Why did this young man, why was he asking for his time? He wanted to go out away from the presence of the father so that he may fulfill the desires of the flesh. The flesh, the desires were calling him. So he walked out of the light into darkness. And we know that he ended up squandering all that the father had given him. Remember, it was the, the father's stuff. Everything that you have is not yours, my friend. It is from the father. It belongs to the father. So he became spiritually dead. Can you imagine? He hit rock bottom, we know that. And the Bible says that when he came, eventually came back to his senses, oh my God, he decided to return home. That is after he had hit rock bottom. He's now eating with the swines. He decided to return home as a servant, not a child. <laughs> Can you believe that? That's what happens. The moment you run away from the father, if you are, not, if you are lucky to, 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 to remain alive, you come back, you know, with your tail between your legs, wondering, you know, shy, ashamed. Thank God he, he, he survived because there are some people who don't survive those experiences. And thank God for the love of the father because the father still loved him. He restored him to sonship. He came home as a servant. He wanted to become a servant. But God, the father said, no, I will restore you to sonship. Just even if there's somebody who has gone, gone wayward, the Lord wants you back. He wants you back into your position, he wants you back into your status as a son. Come back home. Come back home. The prodigal son decided to walk in the flesh. Not you. No. Cherish the sonship that you have been given. Cherish the sonship that you have been given. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8 verse 9 says, You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. You may be, you may be living in the flesh. You do not have to live in the flesh. You do not have to live in the flesh although you are in the flesh. No. It says, You are in the spirit. If in fact the spirit if, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you, does the Spirit of God dwell in you? If he dwells in you, say, yes, he dwells in me. It says, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. Anybody. I don't care who they are. If they do not have the Spirit of Christ in them, they do not belong to him. My friend, you don't owe the flesh anything. You don't owe this flesh anything. You have been adopted by the spirit of life. You cannot then begin to obey the flesh which has been destroyed by Jesus Christ so that you may become his son. You cannot then obey the flesh. No. No. You cannot respond to everything the flesh demands. That is how we fall into sin. That is in Genesis chapter 3. The Bible says that when, she, when the woman, when Eve looked at the tree, what, response, what response, responses did, did the tree, seeing the tree, elicit from her? It was not spiritual stuff. It was the flesh. The flesh looked and saw it was good for food. That's the flesh. One that is good and desirable for, to make one wise, that's the flesh, the pride of life. You cannot respond to everything that the flesh demands, my friend. The flesh is there. Its work is to take you out of the spirit, to take you out of your sonship. We cannot allow that. Hallelujah. He continues to say in Romans chapter 8, verse 12, says, So then, brothers, we are not... We are... <laughs> We are debtors not to the flesh, 
We are debtors, not the flesh, to live according to the flesh. No, you do not have, any, you, not, you don't have an obligation to that flesh. <laughs> let it, let it, let it die. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it was, it was going to die anyway. But why should you die with it? <laughs> Says for if you live according to the flesh, you will, you will die, because the flesh is, is there to die. But remember, you are spirit. The, the, you are a spirit. You should not die with the flesh. No. That's why Jesus Christ came, that you may become the, the, the son of God. That when the flesh goes where it's, where it's supposed to go, you will rise to him, to the Father. Go, go back to your family. He says, in my Father are many mansions. That's why I'm going back to prepare a place for you. He went to prepare a place for you. You, you do not need to perish with this flesh. So if you live according to the flesh, he said, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Who puts to death the deeds of the body? You. Me. Using what? The Spirit of life that Jesus Christ gave us. You cannot let the flesh dominate and lead you. Why? Because as Paul has said, you don't owe it anything. You don't owe it anything. You are not under obligation to please it. Rather, you are a debtor to the spirit of life. And how are you going to, how are you going to disentangle yourself from the flesh while you are still in the flesh? He has given us the answer by summoning the power of the spirit to kill the deeds of the body. Kill them. Kill them. Don't, you know, don't, don't breastfeed them. Don't feed them. Kill them. How? By the spirit, the sword of the spirit. Kill them. The, the spirit of life gives life, but also the spirit of life is, is, has got the power of death in it. How? To kill the deeds of the flesh. <laughs> Colossians chapter 3, Paul writes and says, So, Kill. <laughs> dead then, make them dead. Deprive of power the evil desire lurking in your members. They are there. As long as you're in the flesh, they are there. Because the flesh, that's what it does. It's always lurking. They are lurking in, in, you know, somewhere in, in the background. And if you give them food, if you feed them, they will come to the forefront and they will take over. It says those animal-like you know, impulses, you know, they are animal-like impulses. <laughs> and everything, and says that everything that is earthly in you, that is employed in sin, he names them sexual vice or sexual passion, evil desire, impurity, sensuality, appetites, unholy desires, and all greed and covetousness. For that is idolatry, he says, the defying of self and other created things instead of God. They replace your devotion to God. They replace your devotion to God. If you feed them, they will lead you. But if you kill them, you will be led by the spirit of the living God. So by the spirit of the living God, you kill them. You've got to put them to death. We cannot allow them to breathe. Now, if there's anything that has been breathing that is, uh, that is earthly in you, this evening we kill it in Jesus' name. The moment you kill it, you are led by his spirit. And once you put the flesh to death, it can no longer dictate your walk. Once you put the flesh to death, it can no longer dictate your walk. It is not in command. You are in charge. The appetites will come, trust me. But as long as the spirit of Jesus Christ dwells in you as a child of God, you ought to overcome them. You ought to silence them, to kill them there and then. So then you will be led by the spirit. That's how we're led by the spirit. That's what he says in, in, in Romans chapter 8, verse 14. For all who are, what? Who are led by the spirit of God as, as sons of God. So you cannot say, I'm a son of God, if you are being led by the flesh. Hallelujah. Why? 
Because he says again in Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 15, he gives it to us. He says, you know, for you did not receive the spirit of slavery. Mercy quoted that scripture at the beginning of worship. You did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. <laughs> we have been delivered from the spirit of slavery, slavery to the flesh. Slavery to, when, man fall in, when, man, when man fall into sin, what happened? In the Garden of Eden, he had always had fellowship with God. But the moment he fall, fell into sin, something happened. He hid. Fear came. So he's saying we have, not been, we have not received the spirit of slavery to go back into fear, to hiding from the Father due to sin. No, rather we have been, given the, the, we have been set free by the spirit of life. We have received the spirit of adoption as sons. And now we, cannot, we, we are no longer hiding from the Father. Rather, we have fellowship with him. And we cry, Abba, Father. Abba, Abba, Abba. Abba is an Aramaic word thought to be a very intimate term for Father. Very intimate term for Father. Suggesting that those who use it do so in reference to their close relationship that, that, that they enjoy with God the Father through Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Abba. Not everybody uses Abba. No. Abba is, is, is for those who have a special relationship with him. Those who have disentangled themselves from the slavery of sin, the slavery of fear. They can now, because they are, they are now children, we, can, we, we just come into the presence of the, of the Lord and, and we are crying, Abba, Father, Daddy. You know? Jesus Christ used that term as a consequence of his natural sonship to God. We find that in, um, in Matthew chapter 14. Verse, uh, verse, verse 36, that's what the Bible says. He says, Abba, Father. That's what Jesus said. Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. He cried, Abba, Father, because of his status as a son, naturally. But we too, as believers, can use that and may use and are called to use uh, that word, Abba, Father. Why? Because we have been adopted as children through faith. The spirit that has brought us out of fear has brought us into close proximity, into sweet fellowship with the Father. So instead of running away from him, we are running into his arms, crying and worshipping Abba Father. We can enjoy a great relationship with him. We can experience his everlasting love. We can enjoy his everlasting grace. That speaks of a very close and deep relationship to which you and I have been elevated. And that's why we ought to cherish that position that we have been given. Hallelujah. This is what Paul writes to the Galatians says, and because you are sons, because why? Because you are sons, God has done it. He has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. He sent his spirit into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. And the moment he is in you, the spirit is in you, this is what he does. This is what he does. The, the, the spirit himself begins to bear witness in my spirit that I am a child of God. You don't have to be told by anybody. You don't need the prophet to tell you that. No. His spirit, the spirit that Christ has given you, the spirit of life that he has sent into your heart, bears this witness that you are his child. You feel it. You know it. You know it. Hallelujah. And there are benefits of being children of God. By virtue of your status, you are heirs. <laughs> you are heirs of God. And if children, and if you if heirs of God, we are also heirs with Jesus Christ. The Bible says, provided we suffer with him in order that we may be also glorified with him. So as we come to a conclusion this night, you need to know that that is your status as a daughter and a son of God. You need to maintain that status. You need to fight for that status. It did not come cheap. It cost a life. You need to know that you are not a debtor 
to the flesh. You do not owe that flesh anything. Those, those appetites, those sexual appetites, those smoking appetites, those drinking appetites, you do not have to fulfill them. You do not have to, 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 to live according to the desires and the passions of the flesh. The flesh is not in charge. If the flesh is in charge, then my friend, your, your sonship is in jeopardy. You need to fight and, you know, and, and live and, and kill those passions. You are a debtor to the spirit of life. You owe your life to the spirit of life. You have to ensure that you put everything that is earthly in you to death so that you may no longer be a slave to the flesh. Being led and pulled around by the flesh. No, 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 no. no. So that you may be led by the spirit of the living God. Value your status as a son. Do not be like the prodigal son. The prodigal son was lucky. He had, he had a chance to, go, to come back. Some people never get that chance. So don't play around with that status that God has given you. Don't. Don't. So we're going to pray right now. We're going to pray right now. We're going to call upon the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the spirit of life which put to death the spirit of sin and death. To death. We're going to call upon that so that he may empower you to wield the sword of the spirit and put to death any ungodly appetites in you. I don't know who you are. There's somebody on this, on this line. You have been swamped by ungodly appetites lately. They are threatening your sonship. As many as are led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. If you are led by the flesh, that goes without saying who you are. We refuse that status quo in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. You need to take out the old man in you and his passions and put on the new man. Refuse to focus on the mind, your mind on the things of the flesh. Refuse. Make a quality decision. You cannot Fix your mind on the things of the flesh like those who do not know the Lord. Those whose understanding is darkened according to the futility of their minds. No, 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 no. Because you know what? They have been alienated from, 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 uh, from, from his life. You cannot be like that because Jesus Christ died that you may receive the, the, the spirit of adoption. Choose the light. Put off the old man who belongs to your former manner of ways of living and, and with, with his deceitful desires. Put him off. Renew your mind. That's what the Bible says. Romans, uh, Romans chapter 12. Renew your mind by transformation. Renew the mind of your spirit. How? By focusing on the things of the spirit. Focusing on the things of the spirit. So that you may live in the likeness as a, in his likeness as a son. Flesh. Somebody say, flesh, I owe you nothing. I owe you nothing. You will not dominate me. I will not be dominated by you. I am not your slave. I am free. I am free. I have been freed by the Spirit of of life. I will walk according to the spirit because I have been given the spirit of life. I have been given the spirit of adoption. I am a son of God. I will cherish my status as a son of God. I will feel this <laughs> I will feel Myself with the Holy Spirit. I will fill myself with the Holy Spirit. I will testify to the fact that I am a son of God. I will not allow any evil spirit to, en to entangle me. I am an heir to God. And a fellow heir to Jesus Christ. The son of the living God. Somebody say amen. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, I thank you for your sonship that you have bestowed upon us. King of kings, this evening we purpose not to play around with it. We purpose to cherish it. We purpose to fight for it in the name of Jesus. By focusing, Father Lord, our lives on the things of 
the spirit. By the spirit, my father, Lord, we are putting to death everything that is negative, everything that is not from you, everything that is earthly, in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Every, every sin that so easily besets us, we put it to death this evening in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Why? Because we are your sons. We embrace the sonship of God in our lives. Somebody give him a clap offering, whatever you are. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah.